Hi everyone and welcome back. At the audio video show this year there was one particular speaker brand that had a medium-sized stand floor speaker that sounded so natural yet so controlled in a small room that we decided awarding these guys with our best of show award. The brand is called uh, Audio, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but Jonathan, one of the faces behind the brand, can help you with that pronunciation if you check his video that I left below. These speakers are designed in Norway and hand-built in Europe with some of the best components that money could buy, but more about that in a jiffy. They'll cost you a little over 13,000 euros here locally and almost 14,000 US dollars across the pond, but hold on, we're getting a lot in return, and let's talk about that in the usual fashion. These speakers are called Freak02 and these are so far their most affordable speakers yet. Following the size of their drivers, they look slimmer up top and wider down below, making perfect sense. Having an impressive 30 kg body weight, the acoustical and mechanical resonances are cleverly stopped by the enclosure and internal bracing, and if there are any remaining resonances, then the high quality metal fit will decouple the speakers from the floor and effectively null them. Their base reflex port is located on the bottom of the enclosure uh, that will nicely spread the base energy all around the room. For a tighter base delivery, the bolts should be screwed all the way down and if you need a nicer base extension and a stronger rumble down low, just unscrew the bolts for a few millimeters, elevate the speakers from the ground and the base energy will go up. Although they sounded nice right from the start, you need to fiddle with the height a little bit as they will behave differently depending on the floor they are sitting on. Last but not least, these are looking stunning from any viewpoint. They offer an appealing Nordic minimalism and supple elegance when looking up close. And personally, I like their Norwegian dark oak veneer, but if you want, they offer a lighter oak veneer and the usual black and white matte finishes. Under their hood, things are getting very interesting and let me explain you why. There is one particular speaker driver manufacturer called Seas that are making speaker drivers for plenty of loudspeaker makers all across the globe. And yes, including those high-end Harbat and ATC loudspeakers are using Seas drivers. Now, Seas engineers together with uh, audio engineers, they created together some custom drivers specifically for the Freak 02. I don't want to go into the specifics how those drivers were made, uh, what components have been used, but if you want to know more about them, then please check out my written review that I left below. So yes, those are custom woofers, custom mid-range drivers, and custom tweeters. What's interesting about these drivers is that they are very stiff, yet lightweight, and also very easy to drive. At 8 ohms and having a sensitivity of 90 dB, simply put, these are the easiest to drive speakers that I have tried in the comfort of my home. Uh, these are definitely easier to drive compared to my Rado TD 2.2, compared to my former CAF Reference 3, and compared to any other loudspeakers that I had for a review. And to my surprise, even an 80 watt per channel amplifier drove them pretty easily. Except for the drivers, we have a really special crossover. Unfortunately, these are not my speakers, so I don't want to damage them while disassembling. So here are three pictures I've got from the manufacturer. And yes, that's right, those are Janssen Superior Z caps, Janssen Cross caps, and coil discs, and air core wire coils, and super rest resistors, hardwired point to point with high purity copper conductors. Simply put, this is not your regular crossover. I mean, my former KF Reference 3 that were priced similarly could only dream about such crossovers, and usually you can spot these components in unobtanium level speakers costing you an arm and a leg. I tested them with a few mid-level solid state amplifiers, with a low powered tube amplifier, and then with some huge monoblock amplifiers, and the rest of the system you can see with your naked eye. Owning the CAF Reference 3 for about 3 years now and finally reaching their upper performance limits, 
it was clear to me that I needed a new pair of loudspeakers that would keep my internal forges hot and also my enthusiasm very high. And that's how I arrived at the Raido TD 2.2 that you can see behind me. The Freak 02 are by about three times more affordable compared to the TD 2.2, but the engagement factor, the fun factor, the scale of the music, the holography and also dynamics were actually neck and neck with the radar, which is actually quite interesting. Sure enough, the radars are faster sounding and they have a tighter grip over the bass and overall just a nicer control over the sound. And also they offer slightly more information on the micro level, but everything else was actually very, very close with the Freak 02. The biggest surprise for me was, without a doubt, their well-spread and their massive sounding soundstage that simply let me pick up notes mid-track without a problem. I could easily follow the trail, I could easily walk around the room and it would still be filled with sounds to excess. The second aspect that was very clear from the start was actually their sweet, their natural tonality, their organic nature. So yes, these are actually uh, quite mid-centric and uh, the mid-range purity is actually quite outstanding. Their smooth and relaxed upper treble was also a strong asset, simply letting me play music for hours without getting a hint of listening fatigue. Some might argue that their impressive low-end delivery reaching 29 Hz is their strongest skill and sure enough for speakers of this size is actually a very impressive number. Uh, but the one region that conquered my heart was definitely the mid-range region. Several Nordic speaker brands do proper justice to the mid-range with Dyn Audio and Dali speakers often coming to mind. And it seems that Ur Audio is joining this short list of sweet and organic sounding speaker brands. After hearing them at the audio video show this year in that tiny 10 square meter room and sounding dynamic, natural, but also tight and controlled, I was expecting the same sound in this room, but after getting them, things weren't so rosy, actually quite the opposite. The bass in particular was not reaching so low, it was not so punchy and it was all over the place, not so controlled. Uh, it was very unusual sounding actually in the bass. Everything was okay, but the bass was uh, very off sounding to me. I was informed that they have zero hours of burning. And of course, knowing how big those oofers are and how populated are those crossovers, it was clear to me that they will need at least 80 to 100 hours until they will start singing the way I like it. I bought plenty of speakers and I tested a lot more. And uh, sure enough, some of the speakers were changing their tonality quite a lot, the control, resolution and so on. Uh, but these, it was simply a 360 degree turn, especially in terms of bass delivery. It went from, where is the bass, to Tor Almighty, this is really punchy and impactful. So this is exactly why you should never judge these in the first 50 hours of use or so. Six days later and the bass quantity doubled, but the quality went through a complete transformation, hearing additional layers of bass with a tighter grip over the lowest octaves. And while their 90 dB sensitivity already suggests that you won't need a power overwhelming amplifier to reach super high SPL levels, to my surprise, a Cayenne Soul 170 HA with its shy 60 watt output per channel drove them at very loud levels, leaving at least 40% headroom on its volume knob. The topping PA7 with its 125 watt output sounded quite shy and 2D by comparison and that defined any logic because the Cayenne Soul 170 HA provides much lower 80 watts per channel and yet it sounded much fuller bodied, uh, providing more headroom and some stronger dynamics. It was clear to me that they will work with a wider array of amplifiers, something that I cannot say about my Rado TD 2.2 or about my former Kef reference free loudspeakers. As you know by now, dynamics are an important piece of the puzzle as without them, I simply cannot connect with my tunes. Right now we have some massive 220 millimeter woofers. We have a big 180 millimeter mid-range driver and also bass reflex ports 
that are shooting base nodes directly into the wall, trying to disperse that energy evenly across the room. And getting hit by that 220mm uh, driver in the chest is actually something very pleasing, especially if you are into modern tunes. And sure enough, these are very dynamic sounding, otherwise I wouldn't give them my best of show award. What's more interesting is that they were engineered to work great in your average living room. And eliminating room acoustics is nearly impossible. Yet skilled engineering can significantly mitigate its downside effects. These didn't only sound dynamic and chest pounding and fun from any point of view, but also controlled. And the ability to manage speed is quite impressive, making them superb for electronic music. And while my radios are quicker and snappier, the price tag difference is also substantial to say the least. When it comes to speaker construction, it's no secret to anyone that freeway designs have minimal compromises. We have dedicated drivers for the bass, for the mid-range, for the treble, so the frequency response is complete top to bottom, uh, with little to no gaps in there. And that's exactly what we're getting with the Freak 02. And since we have some big offers and some proper bracing, we're not getting just a perfect top to bottom sound, but also an impressive scale of the music. Initially, I was in denial. How these smaller speakers, smaller than my RAID OTD 2.2, can sound bigger? But over time, I started to realize and I simply accepted in the end that they are sounding at least on the same level with the RAID OTD 2.2 in terms of scale. And yes, the RAIDOS are very impressive in the soundstage department and the same can be said about the Freak 02. Searching for the sweet spot was also quite an interesting adventure. Uh, most of the time you should sit exactly in the middle of your sofa and having this perfect triangle with your speakers. And uh, most of the time that is really the case. That was the case with the CAF Reference 3, but it was not the case with the Rado TD 2.2. And the same can be said about uh, the Freak 02, because I can move all around the sofa and the sound is exactly as focused. I'm getting the same energy from both speakers. Uh, the sound stage is not getting weird and the energy is not going low. So yes, you can walk around, you can uh, stay at the different places in the room and the sound will still be uh, great and having all those hi-fi qualities. Many loudspeakers also require a big uh, room to shine and I have plenty of examples. My former Kefren Fest 3, for example, they definitely needed a bigger room than this to shine and that's why I arrived at those Art Novion bass traps, 50 kilos a piece that could finally you know, uh, calm down the bass and show me some additional nuances, some additional layering and they went from uh, mid-fi to hi-fi and this was actually quite a big difference. Uh, with Dynonio Confidence, they also blossom and sound much nicer in a bigger room. But with the Freak 02, that is no longer the case. And this is actually quite a big deal because not everybody has a big mansion, a big living room, a big open space. Uh, most of us are living in you know, simple apartments. So clearly uh, you need to have a pair of loudspeakers that works great in a simple living room with no acoustic treatment. And that's exactly what uh, is interesting with the Freak 02 because these guys, they made sure they will sound good even in a normal living room without any kind of acoustic treatment. In contrast, the Freak 02 don't require such demands, filling the room with sounds to excess, but without requiring costly bass traps to reveal intricate layers of bass. My reference setup was built to reveal as much information as possible from the music that I'm listening and also from the gear that I'm reviewing. I mean, this is my full-time job and I need to be sure, I need to have some proper tools to say that this is bright, this is dark, uh, this is foggy, this is transparent, and for that I need a very, you know, impressive setup for that to, to happen. And over the years, I believe that I've built that kind of setup. I have the proper cabling and uh, finally I could say what is good, what is bad, uh, what is transparent, what is not. And I'm not sure if those uh, hand-coated paper cone woofers or a titanium former or the carbon fiber tweeters are contributing to this performance, but they deliver a sound close to the source material. 
They offer a transparent and honest sound that didn't alter the frequency response, even in the first days of use, discarding that low quality bass that improved much later on. Uh, it was clear to me that they have this resolving and transparent sound, so I could focus on things happening in the background. They were very good actually on the micro and macro level in terms of detail retrieval as a wall. Once you surpass a center price point, I believe that the resolution becomes much more important because uh, linear sounding speakers can be had for as little as 1000 US dollars, but resolving sounding speakers for that you'll need to pay some top dollars to happen. And these managed to uncover, I believe, a substantial amount of micro detail information, although not to the extent of calling them clinical or detail oriented speakers. Moving on to frequency response, as I have mentioned before, the bass was not that impressive in the first days of use, especially the quality of the bass, but after about five to six days of use, it was transformed into a different animal. Uh, not only the quantity doubled, but also the quality was actually the biggest shock because finally I could hear some additional nuances. And let's not forget that these are reaching 29 Hz and for speakers of this size and of this weight, this is actually impressive. The bass is definitely going lower compared to my former KF Reference 3 and also compared to my Rados, which is hard to admit, but uh, I cannot deny that there is simply more energy and more oomph oozing from that sub bass region. While most of you will rave about their low end extension and also chest pounding impact, for me the region that conquered my heart was definitely the mid range. And I tried several speakers that also use C's drivers like Harbets, like ATC's, and they have a very unique sounding mid-range in the way because it's definitely a little sweeter compared to what I'm getting from my speakers compared to my former KF Reference 3. Definitely sounding more organic and fuller bodied in the mid-range. Of course we have custom drivers in here but I cannot deny that these are definitely sounding sweeter and more organic compared to the speakers that I had before. I started listening to some old small key blues and jazz and of course right from the get-go I could feel those uh, imperfections, that grainy nature of old recordings, yet the naturalness emanating from these speakers was undeniable. The mid-range didn't appear to be amplified in terms of sound pressure level, but the texture, overtones and emotional delivery were surely amplified. Yes, widening with a dome tweeter, and right there you can forget about notions as brightness, harshness, listening fatigue. I mean, I don't remember listening some speakers with dome tweeters that were harsh or bright sounding. If you see a dome tweeter, that's basically synonymous with smooth, easygoing and lush sounding, and that's what I'm getting with the treble region from the Freak Zero Two. These are definitely tuned for an easygoing sound ensuring your eardrums aren't assaulted by some piercing highs. While not all dome tweeters are created equal, those are lighter and stiffer excel at revealing higher quantities of micro detail, especially in the treble. Some folks are always adjusting something with their setup, changing electronics, uh, maybe playing with EQ, with some measurements and so on, trying to make the loudspeakers more natural sounding, but I believe Right now, there are no changes that I would do with the Freak Zero 2 because I believe there is a very nice balance in the frequency response and more importantly, I can listen for these for hours without getting any kind of listening fatigue. I believe that system matching is no longer important with uh, these speakers as it was the case with my former KF Reference 3. Most mid to upper level amplifiers would work well with these, letting them show their mid-range purity while keeping the upper frequencies uh, refined and brightness free. Wrapping up, these guys just kickstarted their gig and they have one single requirement for success. Their speakers should not suck. Of course, they also need to sound better compared to similarly priced speakers of established brands. They need to offer proper support and warranty through a network of distributors and bit by bit they are addressing these necessities. People are oftentimes talking about the enclosures of their speakers the drivers, their measurements, and the spec sheet like the holy grail, but uh, they forget that all the magic starts from within. It starts with the crossover and with the components used in there. 
you can destroy some amazingly engineered drivers with 10 cent resistors and I'm not even kidding right now. I mean, I don't want to discredit or uh, hail some speaker manufacturers, but uh, the components used in these speakers in the crossovers uh, can be found in speakers costing from 20k to 200k. At 14k these are not affordable by any means, but when you consider all the elements, you quickly realize there is minimal to no competition in this niche. If you are aiming for a no compromise design that goes well with a living room, tiny spaces or without investing in the best amplifiers out there, these are slowly becoming a very enticing proposition. That's all for now. If you want to know more about them, then I suggest checking out my written review, which I left below, that contains on average about four times the information of this video. My name is Sando. Keep rocking. I'll see you very soon. Cheers.